The tour is designed to showcase the scale-out, resilience to failure, and administrative capabilities of new ODB. Built on Docker container technology, the tour demonstrates how easy it is to install a new ODB database, load data, and leverage distributed processing capabilities across multiple containers with the ability to withstand failure. We're currently running on a Ubuntu VM with Docker installed on a MacBook. To start off the tour, let's navigate to the new ODB TGT directory that we had downloaded. First, we'll run the setup.sh script. This is setting up our environment and downloading new ODB so it can be installed on the containers that we will run during the next step. Now that the download has completed, let's run the deploy.sh script. To do this, we'll need to enter the credentials that we'll want to use to manage the new ODB domain going forward. As you can see, the script is now starting three different containers, new ODB1, new ODB2, and new ODB3. Each container has the new ODB software installed and is part of the new ODB domain. A new ODB domain is a secure environment for deploying and managing new ODB distributed databases. A do domain can contain one or more databases, and each database can run on one or more hosts. Now that we've deployed our containers, let's take a deeper look at our environment. We can now see that we have three Docker instances, which are the th our three separate new ODB hosts, a Java API, which is the REST service for new ODB domain administrative tasks, and three Java new agent jar processes, which are the new ODB brokers, one running on each of the three new ODB hosts. What we'll do next is start using the new ODB manager to interact with our database. The new ODB manager is a command line tool that lets you monitor, analyze, and control a new ODB domain. What we'll do first is a domain summary. The domain summary gives us a high-level view of what's going on in our domain. As you can see by the output, this confirms that we have three separate hosts which are represented by the Docker containers we installed earlier. Now that we've seen our domain, let's actually do something interesting by creating a database. I'll use the new ODB manager tool to sp specify my database name, username, and password. From there, we have multiple template options. For this case, we'll choose a single host template. Finishing up, we can set other database parameters such as memory allocation and what host we'd like to start the database on. Now that we've created our database, let's see the domain summary again. Now our domain summary shows two additional processes running, one transaction engine and one storage manager, giving us an active single host database. In just a couple simple keystrokes, we've gotten a new database up and running and ready for action. Now that we have this database running, let's execute some simple SQL commands to create a table, insert some data, and query it. For this next section, I'll take some SQL statements that are in the new to be tour instructions and copy them in. The first will create a table users, while the second will enter data into the table. We can run a quick select star statement from the users table to see all the data that we just entered. If we'd want to drill down further, we can run a show table to see the fields and their data types. So what we've seen so far is pretty standard for a SQL database but it's worth getting the basics of a relational database out of the way before we show you the cool abilities that come with being a distributed system. Now that we've played around with some basic SQL and a single host database, let's make things more interesting by updating our demo database. Let's say I'm not happy with the lack of resilience in my database and I want to configure some redundancy. How do I do that? We'll need to log back in to the new ODB manager to connect with our domain. Changing the processes that we have running is as simple as updating this template from single host to minimally redundant. With this change to the minimally redundant template, several important capabilities of new ODB come into play. First, there are now two TEs and two SMs in operation, which means that if any process goes down, the database remains up and running. Also, there are now two copies of the data on disk, which provides data redundancy. Finally, with extra TEs and SMs in operation on additional hosts, the overall performance of the database would increase. This is called horizontal scale-out. And best of all, we accomplish this with no interruption in service. Now that we've scaled out our database, let's make things more interesting by importing some more data. We can copy some SQL files that are part of the new ODB tour package 
and run them to insert some sample hockey data sets into our database. Now that we've inserted our data, let's take a look at what's in there. First, the hockey schema that we just created. In there, we can see our hockey, players, scoring, and team tables. Now let's drill down further into the players table. As you can see, this table contains all the information that would normally be listed for roster information, such as position, height, and weight. We'll do a quick query to show that these tables will behave just as we would expect even though we have an extra TE and SM running. As you can see, the results are what we would expect from a query with a limit of 10. Now that we've imported some data into our database, let's drive some load to make this more interesting. We'll start some sa sample JDBC clients that will continually query the tables in the hockey schema. To start these clients, we'll simply run the three clients that were shipped with the NuityDB TGT package. Now that we've got these three clients running, let's see how they're interacting with the database. We'll do this by going back to the NuoSQL tool and querying the SQL string and node ID from our systems.connections table. This will output the SQL string and what node each JDBC connection is accessing. The interesting thing to pay attention to here is the changing SQL strings and node IDs. Node IDs 2 and 4 are the TEs, and we can see that our transactions are being evenly distributed across both TEs. And you can also see my query of SQL string. It's just another connection to be managed. This required no application tuning or database tuning besides making the update to the database template. If your database ever becomes bottlenecked, simply scaling out to more TEs can bring you the transaction numbers you're looking for pretty much instantaneously and with no disruption to the workload. Let's take a look back at our domain summary before we go forward with our next step, which will be unexpectedly killing a TE that is running. What we'll want to pay attention to here is the node ID. To shut down a process, I'll have to enter the host tag and specific process ID that I want to kill. Let's now check the domain summary to see what's happened. As you can see, there is no longer a node ID 2 and a node ID 5 has been added to the domain. This is because the demo database has a service level agreement enforced by the minimally redundant template. If any process goes down, the new ODB will automatically start and sync a new process to meet the redundant setup of two TEs and two SMs. If I had ran the, the domain summary quicker, I might have caught the database before the new TE was started but I would have had to be fast. Let's go back and use the new SQL tool to check that the new TE, node ID5, is processing transactions like it should be. As you can see by the output of the query, node ID5 is processing transactions as expected. Not only can a new ODB database be updated without downtime, but it can adapt to failure as well, once again without any changes to your application. That's the end of the demo. We've seen install, setup, initial testing in one virtual host, scale out to multiple hosts, and resilience to failure, all in less than 10 minutes. And now I'm cleaning up my installation, just to reassure you that if, and I hope you will, try the tour for yourself, it's not going to leave anything lying around when you're done. Thanks for watching, and please visit the new ODB website to take the tour for yourself.